Welcome back. You are watching Sly Slime, and this is our Beginner's Command tutorial series. Last time we learned about the scoreboard system, and used a simple scoreboard objective to measure the speed of this clock. Today we're going to examine the speed of other clocks and then learn more about high-frequency command clocks. Let's move over a bit here and make a faster clock. This is the fastest clock that you can make with repeaters. We now have to be very very quick in activating it to make sure it doesn't stick on always on. We can already see that this actually lags the game a fair bit, but let's put that in our command block here and do another scoreboard players players add fast repeater fast repeater clock ticks one. Now in order to compare these, let's reset all the scores again. We can see here that the fast repeater clock is already a fair bit faster than the slow one. Let's get rid of this old clock and see if we can improve further. You can also use redstone comparators for clocks. Set the comparator to subtraction mode and then feed its own signal back into itself. This output will now be blinking. Since the signal is analog, we need to move it a certain distance away for it to completely turn off and then we can use it to activate a command block. Let's again do scoreboard players add comparator clock takes one and reset the scores. These two appear to be updating at exactly the same speed. We still want faster clocks though. There are ways to drive clocks using only command blocks. To do that we're going to need to know which direction is which in our world. We're looking towards the negative z direction. Let's instead look in the positive x direction and place two command blocks with one space free in between them. One over here, space free, and then one here. The question to pose is, if I were to place this redstone block here, I would activate both these command blocks because they are now both powered. However, which one would happen first? In the game, they can't happen at the exact same time so one has to happen before the other one. The answer in this case is that this block with a lower x-coordinate will execute before this block with a higher x-coordinate. We're going to use this fact to create a clock. To do that we're using the setBlock command, one of the first commands we learned. We're going to use relative coordinates and move one on the x-axis into the space between the two blocks. We are going to set a stone block right there. This means that if I set a redstone block here now, it gets immediately replaced by a stone block. However, I did set a redstone block here and both these command blocks were powered, so even if this block has been turned into a stone block, this command block will still update. We're going to use that to place another block using another set block command in the same space between the blocks. This time we're setting a redstone block. The question then is what is the result? If we're setting first a stone block and then a redstone block, what remains should be a redstone block, right? Let's try that out. That seems to be the case. The remains becomes a redstone block. So how does this help us with clocks? Well the thing is, once this block executes it sets a stone block, then this block sets a redstone block, which means these two are now powered again. So this one sets a stone block and this one sets a redstone block. We can confirm this by trying to break this redstone block. This redstone block is not actually just a block, it's a block that is being set every tick of the game. Minecraft simulates at 20 Hz, which means 20 times per second. So these commands are being run 20 times per second. Now we can set another block next to this pulsating redstone block to get that block to update 20 times a second. Let's do that for another scoreboard. Players add set block clock ticks one, and then again reset the ticks so we can compare. You can see in the sidebar that the set block clock is significantly faster than the comparator and fast repeater clocks. It may be hard to see on this video, but our performance has also degraded significantly. The interesting thing here is that by turning these two clocks off, my performance improves dramatically. 
even though this clock is running much much faster than these redstone clocks. The set block clock is creating much less lag. If we look around this clock and clear out some space, we can see that we have four spaces available to us to place commands that update on this clock. One below, one above, and one on each side. This is quite an overhead. We're using two command blocks in order to get a clock to execute four more ones. Let's get rid of this scoreboard again since we have now demonstrated just how fast the command block clocks are. We do that by scoreboard objectives set display sidebar without any argument. That clears the display slot sidebar. Now in order to improve the usefulness of this set block clock, we would like to be able to set more commands on the same clock. We do that by changing the set block to a fill command. As we remember from our first lesson in the series, the fill command can be used to set the same kind of block in an entire region rather than in just one place. If we were just to add the same coordinate here, we would still just set one block, but we can offset one of the coordinates in one direction to get more blocks at the same time. Let's do that for the z-axis. Now we have two more stone blocks there, and if we do the same thing on this side, Now we have three redstone blocks here. Trying to break one of them confirms that this is actually a fill clock. All of these three blocks are pulsating. It is also of course very easy to change this number and extend this line out further. If we have gone this far there's also nothing preventing us from doing this on, along another axis as well. So let's add two to the y axis too in both command blocks. Now we have this entire area to place blocks against, and we can execute many commands off of this one fill clock. Our performance is still absolutely fine. You still need to be careful about performance. Running too many commands in one chunk will degrade your performance. You want to try to stay away from updating more than 63 blocks in one chunk. As long as you stay under that limit, you should in general be fine when it comes to performance. One more word of warning when it comes to fill clock is that they update faster than you can react in the game. For instance, if I were to do teleport sliced climb and then teleport myself one block upwards, which shoot me upwards at 20 blocks per second, and there would be no way for me to get back here so I could remove the command block that's doing that to me or switch off the clock. Whenever you're using a fill clock, make sure to avoid crippling yourself that way. It is also very very easy to degrade your own performance using these. For instance, if I were to simply summon an entity here, so even if I summon a skeleton at 40 blocks height here which will immediately kill it, we can use this as a demonstration to see what happens when you flood your world with entities using a fill clock. The number of particles and entities going around lags the world significantly and can even make it hard to get at the command block and turn it off. So be careful when using fail clocks in your command block adventures, but don't be afraid of them. They are one of the most important tool in a command blocker's toolbox. Today we have learned some of the most important fast clocks in any command block invention. We also got some more use for the scoreboard system we learned about last time and we'll keep expanding on that next time. Then we'll learn to use scoreboards in our selectors to select things depending on what their score is. And we'll demonstrate some of the usefulness of the other criteria for scoreboard objectives. If you find these tutorials useful, please do leave a like on the video. As always, if you have any questions or need any help, don't hesitate to leave a comment in the comment section below. Other than that, until next time, good luck with your commands. Thank you for watching.